Take a look at this expression. You might think that it's really, really irrational, just given that we're dealing with cosine pi over 7 here. But let's actually plug it into Wolfram Alpha and see what we get. We'll get 2 cosine cubed pi over 7 minus cosine squared pi over 7 minus cosine pi over 7. And it turns out to be negative 1 quarter. That's really strange. In this video, we're going to see why that's the case for two different reasons. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. So today we want to deal with this expression and figure out why it's a negative a quarter. We're going to have two proofs. One is going to be more on the algebraic side. And then the second proof, stay tuned for it, is going to be a completely geometric argument. Okay, so to start off with the first one, what we're going to do is look at cosine and sine in polar form to get something um, to help us. So we're going to introduce the number e to the 2 pi i over 7. We're going to let that be x. So x to the 7 then is e to the 2 pi i, and e to, the, e to the 2 pi i actually is 1. So x to the 7th minus 1 is 0. Now this expression, x to the 6 plus x to the 5 dot 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 plus x plus 1 is a factor of x minus x to the 7th minus 1, and 1 is not equal to e to the 2 pi over, over 7, so x is actually a root of this equation right over here. And what we'll do to extract a relationship for cosine is extract the real part of that expression. Since that expression, x to the 6 plus x to the 5, etc., plus 1 is 0, the real part of it is 0 as well. Now, the relationship between, between the polar form and trig functions is that cosine of theta plus i sine theta is e to the i theta. So then, if we read this from left to right, we get 1 plus x, the real part of it, which is cosine 2 pi over 7, and the real part of x squared, which is the real part of e to the 4 pi i over 7, is cosine 4 pi over 7, etc., up to cosine 12 pi over 7 is going to be 0. All right, so now we want to play with this expression um, to figure out what it tells us about the cosine of pi over 7 itself. So we're going to need to use some trig identities and actually write out each of the terms so we keep track of everything. So we have a cosine 6 pi over 7, a cosine 8 pi over 7, and then a cosine 10 pi over 7, and then finally a cosine of 12 pi over 7. Okay, and what we're going to want to do is reduce these to angles that are small and then use trig um, identities. So cosine of theta is the negative of cosine of pi minus theta. So you can make the 4 pi over 7 into a negative, uh, the cosine 4 pi over 7 into a negative cos 3 pi over 7, and the cosine 6 pi over 7 into a negative cosine pi over 7. Okay, and then we have that cosine of an angle is cosine of uh, 2 pi minus that angle. So cosine of 6 pi over 7 is the same as cosine 8 pi over 7. And same with cosine 4 pi over 7 and cosine 10 pi over 7. Uh, and also cosine 2 pi over 7 and cosine 12 pi over 7. So we get 1 minus 2 copies of cosine negative pi over 7 coming from that 6 pi over 7 and 8 pi over 7. And we get 2 copies of cosine 2 pi over 7. And then we have negative 2 copies of cosine 3 pi over 7. And that expression has to equal 0. Okay, so now we're in a good place because we can express each of cosine 2 pi over 7 and cosine 3 pi over 7 in terms of cosine pi over 7 itself using either double angle or triple angle formulas accordingly. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do that and see what we get when we uh, do that. So we'll write down theta as pi over 7 just to keep things neat. So we'll have a cosine theta right there. And then we have a plus 2 cosine 2 theta and a minus 2 cosine 3 theta. All right, um, so now let's use those double and triple angle formulas for cosine to help us get an expression for some type of thing in terms of cosine theta. Now the thing is, this will end up being a cubic in cosine theta, so we know we're on the right track in terms of finding some type of expression for 
this thing that we have up top in black. All right, so we're on the right track. The fact that we have a cubic equation involving cosine theta, which is what we want. So one minus two cos theta is something that we have already. Now we have two times, this is gonna be two cos squared theta minus one. And then cos three theta in terms of cosine theta is four cosine cubed theta minus three times cosine theta. Okay, so we have that entire expression is gonna be zero. Uh, so now if we bring this together, the cosine cubed term is negative eight as a coefficient, um, and then we have four copies of cosine squared theta in total, and then the total contribution of uh, cosine theta, we have four and then a minus two, so we get uh, a six and a minus two, so we get four cosine theta, minus one is zero. Now if we bring that one over to the other side, and then divide by negative four, we get exactly that the expression up top that we have is negative one quarter, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's a cool algebraic proof. Now we're gonna go ahead and see how to do this completely geometrically, which is really neat. We're gonna let theta be pi over seven, not cosine pi over seven, it's drawn. And we're gonna draw an isosceles triangle where one angle is theta, and the two base angles are gonna be three theta because those corresponding sides are equal. Now we're gonna split that other three theta angle into two pieces, a two theta and a theta. Now since theta is pi over seven, seven, theta is 180 degrees. So this other angle we just drew has to be two theta as well. So we have a few isosceles triangles, the ones with the two equal sides marked in red here. Um, and then we also have another one whose base angles are theta right over there. Okay, now with the help of some trigonometry, we're gonna be able to get some cool expressions for cosine theta. That'll give us a cubic and cosine theta as well. So let's let x be the size marked with two dashes and y be the length of the size marked with three dashes. And we can scale things so that the side length of the big triangle is one. Now we're gonna drop two perpendiculars. We'll drop one from one of the vertices onto one of these other sides to form a triangle that will allow us to use, um, a, a figure out cosine theta. So we're gonna drop to the side um, with side length one. Um, and then that length there, because we have this isosceles triangle, is gonna be y, uh, one half, because the side length of the big triangle there on that side is one. Okay, so from that, we actually get a trigonometric uh, uh, expression. Um, theta is the angle subtended um, by, in that right angle triangle that we have, and so, one half divided by y is actually cosine of theta. Okay, now we have this other perpendicular that we drew and that's gonna help us as well. So let's first rearrange. We get then that um, y is one over two cosine theta. Now the next expression we have, we've bisected um, the side length y in the other triangle by the other perpendicular we drew. And so we get y over two divided by x is cosine two theta. Okay. That gives us another expression for um, these variables. It tells us that x itself is y all divided by the value two cosine two theta. And we have an expression for y, so we can write this in terms, terms of theta. We get one all over cosine theta times cosine two theta times four. Okay, but as you see from the large isosceles triangle, if we add up these two values, x and y, they have to actually be equal to one. So putting that all together, then we get that the quantity one over two cosine theta plus the quantity one over four cosine theta times cosine two theta is equal to one. And now we have this expression that we know will end up being a cubic in cosine of theta. And hopefully that'll help us get the expression that we want for two cos cubed theta minus cos squared theta minus cos theta. Okay, so we'll clear denominators by multiplying by four cosine theta cos two theta throughout. If we do that, we get one plus two cos two theta is four cos theta cos two theta. Okay, and then now we'll use this double angle formula for uh, cosine. We have one plus two times two cosine squared theta minus one 
is going to equal uh, 4 times cosine theta times the quantity 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay, and now we're almost at where we want. Let's bring all of this together. On the left, we have 4 cosine squared theta minus 1 in total. And then on the right, we have 8 cosine cubed theta minus 4 cosine theta. And we're almost there now. If we rearrange, we get on the right-hand side 2 cosine cubed um, minus the cosine squared theta if we bring the 4 cosine over and then a minus cos theta and divide by 4 to get the negative 1 fourth, which is exactly the expression that we wanted.